You were probably linked to this video by another talk called Church, the Purpose of God in the City. And of course, that video was linked in the description of this video. So I'm explaining the history of, of where this talk came from. It's an audio talk with the video thing applied so that it can be put on YouTube. The reason I did this talk is because the original seems to have been lost. This is a talk that Mike Bickle gave in 2003, around February. I mean, it's in, the date's in the title. It's, it's about February uh, uh, 16, 2003. IHOP KC was in major transition and major growth. They were rounding the corner of their, their growth knee in that time. I had a friend who was on their campus as an intern both before and after, like this was right in the middle of his time while he was there an intern when Mike gave this talk. They had just moved out of their two double wide smushed together and uh, like that was their prayer room originally and they had just moved into this new prayer room and the ceiling wasn't even finished or they were in the process of moving in during that time. And when we have ideas and discussions and questions that are circulating in our community, our organization, our company, our, you know, nonprofit ministry, whatever. When we've got certain ideas going around in the time when we're hitting our big growth, those ideas need to be preserved and remembered because they are instrumental in rounding that corner. It's like building a building. You know, you build the foundation, but then you bury it, you hide it, you cover it up with a house, you pretty much forget about it, but you got to respect it and remember that it needs to stay there. The whole house stands on top of the foundation that we don't see anymore. We don't look at the foundation, we don't mess with it, but it was there, it was put there for a reason, it still is there, it has to stay there. And these are ideas that are part of the fundamental set of thinking and discussions and stuff that were going on at IHOP KC during that very pivotal transitional time. And so, because it was an important time for them, I really felt that the talk was important. Now, my friend had given me this talk as a cassette tape and I'd probably listened to it about a hundred times and yes, I'm one of those guys who quickly memorize the scripts of movies after I watch it like a thousand times or something. And so, I had this talk pretty much stuck in my head. but. That was 16 years ago. I gave the tape away to a friend. The friend probably never listened to it and he threw it away with all the tapes in his house. And I don't you know, he decided to throw away, I'm going to throw away all the tapes in my house. Okay, well, my copy was lost. I emailed IHOPKC and said, do you guys have this talk? They're like, nope. All we have is an unedited transcript or manuscript, whichever they call it. It just, it was typed once fast and never reviewed and that's the best that we have and the lady there emailed me that. Okay. Well, then she emails me back a few days later. She says, um, Jesse, I'm really sorry, but I'm just like a substitute, like worker here for this. Like the lady that normally handles all this was, you know, kind of not so happy because that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to give out unedited transcripts. And so, I'm trusting that you're not going to go put this thing all over the internet. Well, you're not going to get the unedited transcript from me. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to keep it because I'm honest. And they told me about this and I, I respect them. Now, according to procedure, I'm not supposed to have a copy of this unedited transcript. But according to the doctrine of God's sovereignty, that God is sovereign and in charge, I am supposed to have it because I do. That's the bummer of the doctrine of God's sovereignty. Whatever happens is within what he was willing to allow to happen. So, I'm supposed to have this according to God being in control of all things. And I'm an honest person. It just so happens that I've got this sermon memorized. So, if anyone deserves to have this, it's me, I suppose. Well, this is an important talk. And I've got a good, solid, strong memory of this talk from all the days that I listened to it again and again and again and again. And another interesting thing, the lady that typed up this transcript, what it says in the transcript anyway, was Julie Meyer. Now, you might know about Julie Meyer through her public prophetic and public music ministries, but you know, we don't always know how much behind the scenes, mundane, probably more important, less glamorous work people do. Being on the stage, even though we see them there all the time, is not the real work that they do and the little things all the time. And that kind of really meant a lot to me. I'm like, wow, this lady really is volunteering and working all over the place behind the scenes. I mean, you know, you've got to be that way and stuff. 
Well, I mean, I'm a writer, and so I see the natural typographical errors that were made, and they no, they should not have been fixed. The purpose of a first draft transcript is to get the words there as fast as you can, and then go on to the next thing. Don't don't make yourself exhausted by trying to be a perfectionist when you're getting the words down. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, I know what a typographical error looks like. I type that word wrong when I'm trying to type this. And I remember what the talk was from 16 years ago because I listened to this like over a hundred times. So I've taken that transcript and I'm calling it a transcript. Maybe it's a manuscript, whatever I have Casey calls it. I'm taking that with my memory and I'm reconstructing this, trying to use Mike Bickle's tone of voice because I've listened to over a hundred, maybe 200 hours of Mike, many of those talks, at least half of them, two, three, four times. So I'm trying to make this talk as palatable as it can because this was an important talk from history. Now, Julie Meyer, Julie Meyer's grandmother, she's a musician, she's a prophetess. I mean, she gets prophetic dreams that really happen and stuff. She is many things, a little kooky, which is awesome because it means we're real and not pretentious. She is many things, but one thing she's not is a liar. And another thing she is not is lazy. And I can see this, that she did good and she did good work, excuse me. And so I'm watching how this was typed out and I'm comparing that with my memory and I'm reconstructing as best I can. So I'm not claiming that this is word for word. I'm doing my best to be honest and contribute to an important talk that was in fact given at a very important time in history. These ideas are part of what made IHOP KC into the good ministry they are today. And they are an amazing ministry. They have brought together Christians from very different areas in the body of Christ because they really love prayer. They are a unifying force in the body of Christ. And another thing that I always say about IHOP KC, why they're such a great ministry, people don't really know this, but this seeming tension, I don't see it as a tension. I see it as a perfect dance. But this seeming contradiction between God's forgiveness and our need to do good works, they don't have that contradiction in their thinking. And they actually, like you could probably write a few different THD, like, you know, theology PhD papers on how IHOP KC solves the grace versus lordship debate. So like they really have been an amazing ministry and I really believe it's important to look back and listen to the very pivotal, foundational, important teachings that were going on during the time, their formative and transformative years that made them into who they are today, that these beliefs are vital and without them, we would not have the great benefit of IHOP KC as it is. Here's a talk.